friends, welcome to IntelliGear and this how to operate the Coleman Dual Fuel 424 stove video. Okay, so we're outside. I was going to do this on the table in the backyard, but it's a little windy and I didn't want it messing up the audio on the video, so I'm just going to do it out here on the uh, on the steps. And um, let's get right into it. All right, so you got your new stove, you've read your owner's manual and the instructions and all the safety and all that good stuff. So let's just walk through what you need here. You're going to need a funnel which comes with the stove. This is a filter funnel and um, I'll show you how to put it in the in the tank. So you got that and you got your Coleman fuel and you'll need a lighter as well. All right. So, let's open this thing up here. First thing you want to do is remove the tank. Now when you remove the tank, it's not going to want to come out if you slide it forward. What you have to do is you have to kind of tilt it at an angle to take it out. That way the valve doesn't catch on the back of the stove. Alright, so we're going to set that here. Like so. Now, when you're filling this stove, you're to turn it the way I have it here. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure all of these valves are closed. Okay, so everything's closed. Take your cap off. Get your funnel ready. I'm going to show you how to put this in here too. Now, holding on to the bag, especially if it's windy, so you don't have to go chasing it, just set your funnel down in the stove there. Take your cap and put it in the bag and then set that in the stove. That'll keep it from getting blown away. Okay, I'm just going to cut into this uh, video. that I recorded this after the fact. But in order to save a bunch of time and explanation, it got kind of lengthy in the filling. I'm just going to interject this in here. This is a new stove and I wanted to follow the instructions so it came with instructions and um, as you can see from this picture here you see how that filler is put in there? Yeah it's put in there the same way I was showing y'all and that's wrong. That's completely wrong and I'm going to tell you why. This filler, filter filler is designed it's designed to go like this. Now anybody that knows anything about liquid knows that it wants to seek level. So whichever way it's oriented, you're, you know, if you're filling up a lantern or whatever, this should be the long side should be pointed toward the outside or the complete opposite of what this picture shows. Good job, Coleman. I could have re-recorded the whole thing, but I ran out of daylight and I just figured I'll just put this in here and at least you'll know the right way. And I'm not afraid to admit when I make a mistake, but I was misled by a faulty picture and hopefully this will prevent other people from being misled. So the correct way is this orientation and I'll just go ahead and put it in the tank to show you. All right. So before, oh, there's my security system. Gunny's on the job barking at something. So before, let's see, before we had the funnel like this, and that is incorrect. That is not the correct way. The correct way is this way, okay? So you see, you can see there, get a side profile of it. That's the correct way, not this way, the way the picture shows and the way I started out. And I was scratching my head trying to figure out why in the heck did I leak fuel everywhere? Well, that's why, because it was completely backward. So that's level. I mean, you can plainly see from the side profile with this on the table. This is the way you're supposed to fill the tank. This is level, the other way is not. All right, so just keep that in mind. And when you do fill this up, just pour it until it stops um, filling and you'll, you'll be able to tell. Stop pouring when, when the um, when it stops going in and the amount of 
fuel that is still in here, then what you'll do is slowly turn it and bring it out. And as you slowly turn it, the rest of that fuel will go into the tank and top off the tank. Now, the thing with this is, is the, the reason that it's set up like this is designed, the tank is designed to be filled this way so there's an air pocket. You cannot have these completely filled with uh, fluid. There has to be a little room for the air to pressurize the fuel. Okay, back to the video. Okay, you see that picture there? You see how the opening is at the top of the can? You see there? That's how you want to pour it. Okay, that's the easy way to pour it. Alright, so once you've filled up the fuel container, make sure the cap is on firmly. Make sure your valve is turned completely off. Okay? And there's a picture in case you're confused. See, plus and minus. So that would be on, that would be off. Or lefty loosey, righty tidy. All right. And if you look here, you'll see that there's a pump and there's this little hole here. You want to cover that hole with your thumb. That's closed, that's on. Okay, so when you're pumping it, you gotta, you don't want it closed, you want it open. All right. So, Let's go ahead and pump this thing up here. And you want to pump it up 30 times. Keeping it level, like this. And then close that back up like so all right now I'm gonna pause the video I'm gonna go get a rag now that it's pressurized and I'm gonna wipe this down because I did spill a little fuel out of here and what we're gonna be checking for is leaks so let me go get a rag I'll be right back okay and we're back I've wiped down the tank removed all that fuel that I spilled so the tank is dry now there's three places you want to check for leaks now that you know the the purpose is you of, of checking for leaks is you got to pressurize the tank so then you check for the leaks once the tank is under pressure so the first place you want to check is your filler cap make sure there's no leaks there next place you want to check is your valve assembly and don't just visually look take your finger and fill around if it has any leaks the fuel will pull up okay so make sure that's dry so around the valve assembly just take your finger and fill around make sure there's no no leaks and then let me turn it this way so you can see it the pump assembly you want to check around this as well and make sure that there's no leaks okay so now that that's done, what we're going to do is marry it to the stove assembly. And all you do is you come in through this hole with the generator and put it in that plenum. And then it sits in these notches. Get a little view down there. The notches for you, okay? It sits in those notches there. All right. Now, I highly recommend that you use a long match to light this stove or something like this that's got a little reach on it. Now there's two, two ways you can light this stove. One is with the grill and lid, or not the lid, but the wind guards up. Or if it happens to be a little windy like it is today, you can just go ahead and put the grill down and, and deploy the uh, wind guards. We're going to do option two today because it's a little windy out here. Now, the other thing is also is um, if it's really cold and temperature is 40 or below, um, I highly recommend that you use the Coleman fuel 
as well as Coleman. Um, if you're having trouble getting your low, uh, getting the uh, stove lit, what you can do is you can turn this on and just here. Let me show you. Showing's better than explaining. Just turn this on and spray a little bit of the white gas on top of this burner so it's sitting on top of here. Um, don't spray here because it'll just run out down here and then you'll have flame down there. But just right here on top of this bolt, there's a little divot. Spray a little fuel up there or on there and then put this back in like this and then light that fuel and that'll preheat the generator a little bit for you. Okay. So, all right, we're getting ready to light it here. Now, once again, it's very important that you don't rush into this and that you pump this up and let it sit for a couple of minutes and check visually and physically to make sure there's no fuel leaking. If there's fuel leaking, that's a big problem. You need to tighten up the appropriate bolts or examine the appropriate gaskets and make sure that you get those leaks fixed before you operate the stove or you could be in big trouble. Okay, so we got the stove pumped up, and um, we're ready. We're ready to uh, light this now. What you want to do is you want to turn the lighting lever to the up position, like this. Okay. And once you've done that, depending on what the conditions are, you can light it with these out already or not. But like I said, today it's a little windy, so. We're going to have the wind guards in place here today. <clears throat> Flip this around. Okay. There we go. Let me make sure. Make sure we're still in camera view there. Okay. Now, you're going to turn this knob two times quickly. Okay. Um, while holding the lighter, down here. First time fire up, you saw it here. If you follow the instructions, it'll go off without a hitch. No problem. Now I'm, I've got it full open now. Now do that slowly. Once you've got it, once you've got it lit, slowly open this. What you're doing is you're giving that generator a chance to heat up uh, because that generator is going to turn that liquid fuel into a gas, just like natural gas. Ugh. All right, so we're going to wait about a minute and let this come up to temperature before we attempt to light the second burner. And you gotta love it outside, right guys? With all the uh, ambient noises, trucks backing up and trains. <laughs> There's our local uh, afternoon freight train coming through. Train don't bother me. I, um, I grew up near some tracks and that, it actually, uh, you get used to it, it puts you right to sleep. The sound of the the rail, uh, the cars on the rail, you know. But anyways, okay, so you can see it's kind of an orange flame right now. So what we want to do is bring this down, bring it up, bring it down. And what I'm doing here is I'm just cleaning out, I'm cleaning out the uh, the generator because there's a little there's a little needle that moves back and forth in there. Okay, so now that I've got it going for about a minute, I'm going to pump it up. Now be careful, don't touch the stove, and don't lean over it, and I'm going to add some pressure to this tank now. Yeah, whatever you do, don't lean over the stove. <laughs> Send your eyebrows. Now, I know that seems ridiculous, I would mention that, but believe me, there's people out there that have no clue, they have no idea. And you know what? That's okay, because we've all got to start somewhere. Humans are uh, designed 
to learn from their mistakes, but unfortunately, there's some mistakes that you can't take back. And um, nobody learned how to walk without crawling, and nobody learned how to ride a bicycle without falling and skinning their knees a few times. So now what I'm doing is I'm just turning this down a little bit. And look at that sucker, man. I love that sound. All right. Turning this down a little bit. And let's go ahead and light this second burner up. So, on the side here, you have this knob. Oh, and by the way, guys, I didn't mention it, but, you know, hopefully you're not doing this as you're watching it with me. But make sure this guy's closed over here when you light the stove. <laughs> Guess I should have mentioned that. That didn't work, so we're gonna close that back. And I'm gonna give it, give it full gas here. Told you it's a little windy out here. All right. There we go, it's lit. So you see what I'm saying by having something long like this versus a little a little lighter like this? This is experience talking. This ain't my first time to the rodeo. Alright, so they're both both lit. I love that sound. Give it a little more gas. Now if you watched my review video on these stoves somewhere in there if you watch the whole thing I ramble sometimes I mentioned that um, this stove will run for about two hours on high with both burners on high <clears throat> which is awesome so you're cranking out 7500 BTUs on your main and 6500 on your secondary burner for a total of uh, 14,000 BTUs. Make sure you read the instructions. Um, I'm gonna put put the instructions in this video, little parts. I uh, might just insert them in the uh, video as we go along, just little pictures. But make sure you read those, and then inevitably you're probably gonna lose those, so you've got some instructions right on the lid there. All right, so we got this thing going. Let's turn it down a little. All right. So, um, I think something I didn't mention in the other video is this will accommodate two 10 inch pots or any combination of smaller and larger. And, um, you know, you could definitely get away with a pretty good sized uh, frying pan skillet on there. So, just thought I'd mention that. Now, periodically you're going to have to pump this thing back up, but that's the price you pay for having a dual fuel system. Uh, propane, you know, it's plug and play, but there's a little bit more work involved with these here. But, you know, then you got that that option of uh, unleaded fuel, which I don't suggest you use unless it's an emergency. Coleman fuel isn't that expensive. One can of Coleman fuel is equal to that of four and a half of those smaller fuel canisters or cylinders, the propane fuel cylinders. So, the uh, cost benefits, you know, it's, it's right there with it, if not maybe saving you a little bit of money. And then, like I said, you have that other fuel alternative of the unleaded gas. Now, the reason I recommend you don't use unleaded gas ever, unless it's an emergency, is there is impurities. Uh, this Coleman Camp fuel is highly refined, and there's impurities in unleaded 
regular gasoline and additives. So those will clog up your generator and they will cause your generator to uh, fail prematurely. You won't get as long of a life out of it. And then are you really saving money when you got to go replace your expensive generator? So that's my advice and opinion on that. And what else in closing here can I impart, impart upon my <clears throat> viewers of this video? Obviously, it's a stove. It gets hot. Don't touch the stove. <laughs> um, if you do, make sure you wear gloves. You have um, a heat shield underneath the burners, so it's safe to set it on a wooden table. It's not going to get hot enough to catch the table on fire or anything like that. Make sure that you don't light it anywhere near where you filled it up, or you know, if you did, make sure that there's no uh, fuel spillage. And uh, yeah, that's that's about it. So you, to turn this stove off, just go all the way back to close, and some of the gas is still going to be going through, and you're going to have some flame for a while, but don't worry about it. It'll put itself out. Make sure that the stove is completely cool to the touch before you stow it away and put your um, your pressure tank back in there and a word on the pressure tank make sure that when you um, refill this that is completely cool take it out of the stove and refill it safely away from the stove okay and we're back sorry about that my battery died and I lost my daylight waiting for it to recharge so I brought the operation inside now let me just complete the refilling portion of this for you. Now keep in mind this tank is still pressurized. What you want to do is you want to put it back to the filling position, which is sideways, okay? And very carefully remove this, this cap. And this one's on here a little tight, so let me try to take this off of here. Okay, all right, I got it started. Now, if you listen, what you want to do is you want to slowly let the pressure out of this tank. Thought I had it. Let me get this back on here. There we go. Okay. Now, slowly, just give it little turns and let the pressure out of the tank. Hear that? Just like that. Bleed the pressure off. until you don't hear that anymore. Okay. All right. So, there you have it. Just slowly do the cap like that and bleed that pressure off. Now what'll happen is if you just unscrew this without bleeding the pressure off like that, whatever fuel may be remaining in here could come exploding out so then you got a big mess to clean up all right well i hope you enjoyed the video i hope it was useful um if if you um are interested in the instructions i'm going to put them up on the end of this video here just little pictures of the instructions that came with it and um as always i appreciate your input and your feedback Please remember to like this video, share it with your friends. Um, if you like my videos and you just found my channel, go check out my channel page. I have other videos you might like and subscribe. And you can follow me now on Twitter and Facebook and Google+. Alright, thanks again friends. Until next time, this is Intelligear. Be well.